Hey guys, and welcome back to video number four. I can't believe we went this far already. So, in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and, as I've said previously, each and every item I'm going to add to my home automation or my home assistant, I'll go ahead and create a video for it. So, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at editing the existing sensors that we added in there so you'll see when we get in there it's going to look exactly the same as we left off last time i'm just going to go ahead and edit that one and add a few different sensors onto that one esp instead of using um, just the relay and the temperature sensor we added last time we're going to go ahead and add in a pir sensor as well as a read switch and then i'll be able to go ahead and add that in my kitchen as an actual sensor that i'll be able to use in the future for automations and then once we have that set up if we have enough time we can take a look at adding some rgb lights on there as well the last video was just a overview of how to set up everything how to get started with esp home and adding in your own sensors but now we're going to go ahead and customize that to what i'm going to add to my home and you can go ahead and follow along with me so without with that said we can go ahead and take a look there we go guys so we're back inside home assistant as you can see we have everything exactly the same way as it was or as we left it last time um the only thing i did was i did update my home assistant so it has the latest updates and then as you can see we do have our relay listed right here so i can go ahead and turn that on and off and as you can see that is working as well as the temperature and humidity sensor is also active right here now i'm not going to go ahead and use a relay in my kitchen this is going to be a sensor that i'll set up and actually install into the kitchen so i don't need a relay there i'm only going to go ahead and add a door sensor which is a read switch that'll sense if the door is open and closed and then I'm also going to go ahead and add in a PIR sensor. Now, the PIR sensor is going to just detect movement, but we'll be able to use that in the future as well. So you can use it for um, detecting if someone is inside the house or use it as an alarm system. And as we go through the process, you'll see that I'm going to go ahead and set up a full house alarm system that will send you notifications and we can also set up automations according to the sensors that we have so it's not going to be just a sensor for detecting movement and then sending us a notification but we can also go ahead and set that up so like i would like to go ahead and turn off the lights in the kitchen for example if there is no movement for a specific amount of time so let's say say five minutes goes by and there's no movement in the kitchen we'll go ahead and turn off the kitchen lights so let's quickly go ahead and open up esp home while we're here let's go ahead and click on there there we go so all we need to do is we can go ahead and hit the edit and in here i'm going to definitely go ahead and replace that name because this is going to be a permanent install in my kitchen i'm going to go ahead and rename this to a kitchen multi which means just a kitchen multi sensor um you need to check your naming um as you can see mine is all lowercase and a single word then that's it then we can go down to our sensor so we still have that switch and we also have that temperature sensor connected right here. We're not going to use this switch. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with my kitchen door sensor or the read switch. So that's a binary sensor. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the code right here. Now you can go ahead and search for this uh, on ESP Home as well and how to add it in. But basically what it is, is a read sensor looks like this so it comes in two parts you have your main connection so you place that in you connect one wire to ground and then one wire to the pin that you have specified and then on your door you or your window you add in this magnet so as soon as it's closed it bridges that connection between these two wires so it basically connects your wire to the ground so your pin you've specified it's going to bridge that to the ground pin and as soon as you remove it it opens up that connection so it just sends that state to your specifics uh, pin so that's what we have right here so we have the pin number specified so d2 it's a pull up so 
and then we also have the name of that sensor so it's a kitchen door sensor and then the device class is door because it's a door sensor now you can go ahead and make it a window sensor that'll work as well you just go ahead and connect it up and i'll show you guys exactly how to do that as well but we're not finished yet so we still need to go ahead and add in our pir sensor i have one right here and it looks like this so that's a pir sensor and um, on ESP Home, they have a good explanation of what exactly it is. So you can see right here, it tells you exactly everything of that sensor and the sample code in here as well. So all I need to do is I need to go back in here, just press enter. Now, what you would see is that this is also a binary sensor. Now, if you remember in my last video, I said that we can't go ahead and add in another binary sensor but because we already have one we just add in the code below that here we just go ahead and press enter go to platform and then paste in that code right there as long as it lines up we don't need to add in binary sensor because it is already listed as a binary sensor now if you want to you can go ahead and enter a space in there and all it is, it's just a pin that specifies to which pin it is connected to. The name of that sensor, and obviously it's a PIR sensor, so it's going to be listed in Kitchen PIR. And the device class is going to be listed as Motion. So as soon as it detects motion, it's going to send a signal. And as soon as it doesn't detect motion, it's not going to send a signal. And that should be it. So we have pin D2 for the uh, read switch. D4 for the PIR and the DHT we're going to leave exactly as is. And that should be it. So now I can just go ahead and hit the upload button right there and let that upload. There we go. Okay. So I may have made a quick mistake. Um, as you guys can see, it is a learning process. I wouldn't recommend renaming your sensors. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one copy all the information over and add in a new sensor instead so if you do want to rename that um, it's quite a process if you really want to rename it the best option would be is just to go ahead and copy the, this instead so we add a new sensor and just copy the code over to a new sensor instead as you can see it did upload the code successfully but we won't be able to uh, remotely edit that unless we change a lot of config files so instead of doing that I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the code that we have in there and remove the sensor and then we just add in a new one like I showed you using the USB port flashing so we can just go ahead and type in the name of that sensor and remember the naming there shouldn't be any capitals there we go continue wi-fi information access gonna leave blank don't save continue and hit submit there we go and it's going to go ahead and ask us to select the port so i'm just gonna say usb going to edit that uh, not yet so we still need to validate that and hit upload and that'll go ahead and upload the code so instead of going ahead and renaming it we just go ahead and delete the current sensor and add in the new one in there and then upload the, that code there we go so that's uploaded so all i'm gonna go ahead and do is edit that and then just paste in the code right here that we copied over and hit the upload to update that configuration sorry about that but i felt that i needed to leave that in here just so if you guys run into something like that as well it may be just easier just deleting in and adding in the new sensor and that should be it so let's go ahead and wait for that to upload and we can take a look that's it so that went ahead and up uploaded i'm quickly down here i'm just going to show you guys uh, this is the read switch switch itself so right here you can see we have the two 
wires coming out of the switch itself so one would be connected to the pin and one would be connected to ground now it doesn't really matter which way you put it on um, it's just going to create a bridge between the ground pin and the pin that you've specified on there and this is the little magnet so it'll just go on here and that'll go ahead and create that contact now and then for the PIR sensor we're going to use is this one right here now if we turn it around we don't see any marking showing us which is VCC which is ground and which is the data pin on here we only have these two dials so one is for the sensitivity of the sensor and the other one is for the time it'll be active and not active so what you could do is if you have the exact same one that I have or one that looks similar is usually you could just pop off this top right here and then once you pop that off you'll see it, it has the markings on there right there so we have VCC right here then we have the middle one is going to be the data pin I'm not sure if it's focusing correctly and then right next to it we have the ground pin so we can go ahead and connect that up and that's a little sensor right there so let's quickly go ahead and plug that in and take a look okay so that's it guys we have them set up right here so as soon as you see we can go ahead and make some movements on here so let me quickly go ahead and move so you'll see on here it's going to change the states on my log file right here so if i'm quickly going to go ahead and make some movement right in front of that pr sensor there we go so as you can see it changed the states on there i may need to change the sensitivity using the dials but as you can see it does in fact change state as soon as movement has been detected same with the read switch so let's quickly test that out so I have it right here. So as soon as I move the read switch and make contact with that magnet, you'll see right there the kitchen door change state to off. And if I remove it, it opens back up again. So just like that. And that should be it for setting up that sensor. So now we need to go ahead and add that back into Home Assistant. So once we have that set up, we can go ahead and go back to our overview and obviously you'll see it looks now a bit weird because remember we deleted that sensor so we also need to go ahead and remove that from our um, home assistant so in the configuration section under integration you'll see we have this listed right here we can just click on here and then click on the little trash can right here and that'll go ahead and delete that sensor for us you can see right here we already have kitchen multi listed so I showed you in a previous video how to manually add it how to manually add it so what we could do is just click on configure right here and we can say submit and just wait there we go so that has been added to our home assistant installation and if we click on it, you'll see it shows us all those devices. So we have the temperature and humidity, the door, and also the PIR. So what we could do is if we go to overview, um, we need to go ahead and edit this and delete these right here as well. So to do that, we just go ahead and click right here, configure UI. So once we have this open, we can just go ahead and click right here and click on delete card. We can remove these and this one as well just delete this card same with the temperature and humidity we can just go ahead and delete those as well so all we need to do is we can just go ahead and hit the plus sign click on entities remember we just added those and then we can go ahead and select those specific sensors so we have our kitchen door sensor we can also go ahead and add in that PIR sensor right there and hit save so as you can see it's currently saying that motion has been detected and the kitchen door is open so if I go ahead and close it or move the magnet right next to there we go and as you can see it shows that the door is closed now that kitchen PR is going to go ahead and say detected not detected because it's showing right to me so as you see it's so clear and as soon as I move again it's going to go ahead and change that to detect it again. 
Then for the temperature and humidity, we can go ahead and add those back in as well. So right here, we say living room temperature, save. We need to change the name of the te living room temperature. So as you can see, the entity name still shows living room temperature, but this is going to be in the kitchen. So we may need to go ahead into ESP home and edit the code shown here. Remember it's showing living room right here. We'll just replace that to kitchen. And the same with this one. And then delete the room right next to it. Oops. And then we can go ahead and update that as well. And there we go. So that uploaded and corrected that code for us real quick. So we should have that listed correctly now. So if we go back to the overview. As you can see, it shows us that it's not available because we renamed it. So we can just go ahead and edit this one and change that entity to the kitchen temperature and hit save. And it should show correctly. The same with the humidity as well. We can go ahead and add that in there, add that in here as well as a entity and then add it in. So we go in here and just select kitchen humidity hit on save now you can add it mold uh, just below each other as well so if you edit the existing ones you can add that in here so if we click edit you'll see it shows us kitchen humidity we can go ahead and add in the kitchen temperature as well and hit save so depending on the way you like uh, would like your home assistant to look you can add it in um, specific ways okay so to remove these all the way to the top, um, that has been auto detected in there from the previous sensor. All we can do is we can just go ahead and edit and configure the UI. And then if we click on the edit option right here, you'll see it shows us badges and you'll be able to remove these badges that's listed on there. So if you don't want them to be displayed, you can just click on the cross right there. So I definitely don't want the living room temperature or the humidity. And also the updater is not necessary to show in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and hit the save button right here. And there we go, and that should be removed. There we go guys, I think I'm gonna leave it there for this video. I hope I want, had some useful information for you guys. Again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask me down below. I'll definitely be using that in my kitchen. Um, as for what do you put your sensors in, um, I have a 3D printer so I may be go ahead and print me a custom casing or if you don't have uh, a 3D printer, a soap casing is a very good option to make you so you can just go ahead and drill holes and just throw everything in there and then connect it up. Um, I think that's going to be it. In the next video we're going to go ahead and add some lights, maybe add in some RGB strips as well. So um, that should be up next week. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.